Testing, testing, testing. Uh, one, two, three. Mic check. Mic check. I'm going to. <clears throat> Hey, good morning, Taylor. Or good afternoon, should I say. What's up, Damien? Lacey Woods, what's good, man? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Allison, how you doing? Before I start, I'm going to get, get some more folks to get in here. Um... I, this this uh, live can be viewed later as well. So um, tune in. What's up, Leon? What's up, Gil? How's retirement life? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. T can't complain. Brian Murray, Anthony Uretha. So I'll definitely uh, share this video in or this live, and I will definitely comment um, when it's over. I'll, I'll interact with it as normal, as usual. Um, I just want to uh, talk about a few things. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get started right now. It's 12 o'clock. And um, I want, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much going into election season now. And, you know, it's a lot of, you know, in my opinion, it's a lot of bad behavior going on out there. The way folks is, is trying to trash people and trash names. And, um, and some of them... Um, have not never held a union position. And I, I, you know, I've always thought that when you was about the people, that you were very careful on the things that you, I would say, donated to management. Because management is on all these sites. They're on all these sites. And, and a lot of the sharing of, uh, of videos where we got people out here who, who may not always um, do things in accordance to what the transit deems as the right policy. And we're sharing it amongst each other and giving transit easy access to discipline our members, right? Then you have other folks who go out here and give misinformation. One of those folks who give misinformation, unfortunately, is Ed Gator out of Gun Hill Depot. Um, I had did a uh, divisional meeting where I talked about hiring ratios. And um, he was in the AM meeting. He came back in the PM meeting and, and basically um, tried to say that I lied to the membership about the hiring ratios. So that part, I'll just say, Mr. Gator, um, there's been a lot of things that had went on since bus consolidation, including the absorbing of 126th Street Depot into the map store seniority system. So I'm just asking, do you believe that if we, we, we gained 400 jobs, took at the time 216 people into our seniority system, do you think that the hiring ratio remained at 60-40? And why would you believe that the hiring ratio remained at 60-40 if we have gained all these jobs and we've also absorbed folks into our seniority? That's not really forward thinking, right? And for you to bring it up at a divisional meeting, to me, was like a this superficial 
It was just very superficial. It's a, it was a fake attack. But let me get let me let you, everybody and the world know that we have a 50-50 hiring ratio. We've gained that 50-50 hiring ratio when it came down to us absorbing 126th Street, the work and uh, and uh, the bus operators into the map store seniority system. So we, cha we, we changed the hiring ratio. And basically that's the sum of it. Now the contract, if you open up the, the, the big white book, the contract will tell you on the bus consolidation that we had a 60-40 split in um, hiring ratio, but that has changed. It's changed over time. Things do continue to change. I I often talk about it that um a contract is a guide, but you know the the things that change in the contract could be through arbitration decisions or other contracts. So when you put people in place, you you better recognize that they don't know what they claim to know. And also, since I'm on Ed Gator, I'm gonna just say the time that Ed Gator came in with the retirees medical. He had a big binder of information and he was talking about how the union sold out the retirees and that they won. And and I says, you won? I says, well, can I see what you, what you have there? And he was reluctant to show it and then he did show it and it just showed this Marianne Pizza Lady, and this Marianne Pizza Lady was, um, first of all, not of our union, and it was just merely an affidavit that went to the court system. Now, the retirees I've been talking to, who actually utilize the benefit, and whom have some of the issues that um, they that that the naysayers claim that aren't covered, have came back and said that these things are covered and they're very thankful for the coverage. So I'm just going to leave that there because I don't deal with the retirees as much as, um, as much as people would like to think. I mean, we deal with the active members. We have a retirees association at the union hall that deals with the retirees. And that's really what the, the sum of all, all these conversations really boil down to. So we are a union and we are a union that pretty much has argued with each other since since basically since I've been involved in this in this business on the job and the bottom line is this arguing amongst each other it should never be about us fighting each other yes sometimes the the other side has a good idea. But us fighting each other, tell me, let me ask you, where does that really, where does that bring the brand of TWU? Because the people that benefit off the fight is the MTA. The M make it, let me make it clear, the MTA is our adversaries in this business. There's no other adversary to us except p certain people in government that don't support our issues and, f and the MTA because the MTA has over time tried to run this company like a business, right? So if you run it like a business, you're just looking for profits or you're looking for money at the end in a positive, in a positive area. So, you know, me letting you know that the MTA is our adversaries is very much what the truth is. They are our adversaries. Um, now, recently, now I want to get into a, some conversation here and have you guys at least have the knowledge of what's going on. Now, the MTA has really, really relied on congestive pricing. Um, they made promises to folks such as the um the fixing of the subway system and and whatever other um avenues that they decided to make promises on so congestive pricing 
is a real key here. Now, it's delay, and I'm going to call it a, what it is. It's a delay. Um, it's not a cancellation. Uh, con the congestive pricing delay has caused the MTA to um, do what you actually see is going on. Now, here's what the MTA, our adversaries, by the way, they say, this is what they say. Um, they believe that they believe that our bu budget right now, because the DOB, every department in the MT in the MTA gets a budget. The Department of Buses budget was over budget by thirty million dollars. All right, the blame for that over budget is is um, the blame if they, the the claim is um, availability because we don't have operators available we're paying out overtime so that's like a little bit of an oxymoron in a way because at least for for us because a lot of us live off of overtime a lot of us pay our mortgages and our car notes off of overtime and and they're having this expectation to make us believe that overtime is killing their budget they've been new overtime was a budget issue for for them and other things but but the mta creates titles and they pay out these amounts of money on their titles so there's nothing wrong with that but us working overtime there's something um incredibly wrong with so this is what makes them our adversary you know one of the things anyway they're changing the narrative around um and just to be clear, the TWU believes that the MTA should focus on fair evasion. The fair evasion culture um, has this has no funds really coming in, not as much anyway. I don't really know what the numbers are, but they're not coming in. And because they're not coming in, that is part of why you go over budget, I would presume. Right. You don't have a, a source of funding that you had like in the 90s and 2000s and then then pro then then pat then um the the um pandemic hits and then now you can't collect fare right and then you you've always expected the bus operator to collect the fare and of course we're not we don't believe that we should um collect the fare we don't believe that we should be putting ourselves in harm way to be collecting the the fare especially when we when it has been proven and i'm going to get into how it's proven it's proven that the mta does not care about its workforce now in all good time the budget's good the mta will come out and make it seem as if they partner with the union on caring about um the member safety but i'm there to tell you that that's not true and it's never been true it when when they show any type of effort of caring about any of us it is because we've pushed them we've pushed them we've had meetings with them we've argued with them we've pushed them right they get out here and then then they they have transit appreciation day they don't want to include the union in that they want to go around and shake your hand they want to make sure and make it look like that they're the ones doing something and that they care about you it's so untrue it's so untrue we don't mind being in the background but we're going to tell you the truth the truth is the union is the one that has pushed the mta to do certain things to bring out the bring up the morale of the operator but we always stay with the focus of safety we 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 often tell um the, the mta what their responsibility is under the workplace um the workplace violence and prevention law right because there is a law on the books that says that they have to keep us safe so in with it so if you see uh you go to you go to zariga and uh, they give you some type of uh, de-escalation course. That's them trying to comply or saying that they're compliant. Um, whenever you do a right to know, that's them complying. When you do a right to know with something with safety, if you're doing a right to know on how to deal with a customer, they're, they're trying to comply with the law. They're going to say that they're complying with the law. But I'm going to tell you the de-escalation is garbage. 
all right? The de-escalation, the, um, it don't get into a person's, uh, it doesn't get into a person's triggers. You don't know who, you, we don't know what people's triggers are out here. So how could you de-escalate them? You cannot. You cannot de-escalate people. Sometimes just saying hello to somebody will trigger somebody, right? But then we're in a culture where we're supposed to be customer friendly, say good morning, and 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 say good good afternoon or or good evening, and that can trigger somebody. Or your bus is going too slow, like like it happened to one of our our operators. Bus was moving too slow. That triggered somebody into um, an assault where where we're still fighting that issue in court. But these are the cultures that we're living in, and the MTA thinks that everything is fine. It's not fine. Um, us fighting each other is not fine because we all choose a side. And when we choose a side, we put garbage out on the other side. And when we put that garbage out on the other side, in the end, what we're doing is we're weakening our union. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Now, Obviously, I'm being very nice about it because I don't really want to get into that kind of a discussion. But I see it all day, every day, about some misinformation that had went out there that somebody had got from the Internet. If you want information, you can contact me directly. I'll be more than happy to give to give you um, an answer on what you're looking for. Or your divisional offices, or the, or your even your union chairs and in, in the offices that's in the depot. I mean, the, the, the why would why would someone from the outside of who represents you know more than you, right? Why would somebody who is outside of who represents you know all the answers, and then your union doesn't know the answers? That that doesn't really make any sense, does it? Right. I've t I've chosen the path of of uh, not arguing with folks. I chose the path of not debating over the issues. I'm in my 31st year on this job. I know what I know. You cannot take away what I know. You cannot convince people with I don't know or what I do know. If I make a mistake in maybe some wording, it's just a mistake in the wording. Right, I'm not an English. I'm not an English professor. It's not what I signed up for. I'm a bus operator. At the end of the day, I just happen to be vice president of a department. And let me get into that for a minute. Right. Um. I've already told you that the, the MTA blames our availability on the problems that we have, but it's not. It's not our availability problem. The availability issues is something. It's, it's it's people are retiring, they're not filling the jobs fast enough. Um, civil service lists are not being certified fast enough. Um, so it's very hard to comply with the hiring ratios if this if if they can't certify the civil service exams, because the civil service exams, um, they gotta certify them so people can get hired, and once hired then obviously um, we could fill vacancies that's here. But it's a little bit more than that. It's a little more than that. They, um, some folks don't even want this job, being quite frank and honest with you. They don't want this job because, uh, you know, the pension. And we're trying to improve that now. And we've made some improvements to the pension, to the tier 6 pension. Um, one of um, one of the things that we've done is is reduce the five year average down to the three year average for tier six, and that's huge. You have to fix all these little things before you go and fix the big thing that everybody's looking for. And we're looking for the elimination of the um of the the salary ceiling on what you can make in overtime. We're looking for that, but um, it is what it is when it comes to that. We will continue to fight that. But let's get into the congestive pricing issue. Uh, the MTA's response 
to the governor and and it's funny because you in in some senses you would think that the MTA was against its own governor and the governor is the boss right and then in other thing other things you say well look maybe this is a plan so that she can backdoor so she can make it look like she's for the people and then for correcting the system at the same time so you know we we know that those politics are always played out there but um congestive pricing the mta's response to congestive pricing um basically was it put the department of buses on 31 million above above their budget right so what are they doing now what are they doing we see it happening in the brooklyn division certain things not sending out runs and we see it happening in manhattan in the bronx where um they're not sending equipment out uh there's not enough buses to go out into service they they have people amongst and we're talking about our members they have people standing and waiting in the swing room for buses <laughs> um they're giving they're not covering runs um because of the so-called absences we cover the you know the the, the benefit in on the manhattan and bronx side is um your union does the work in advance so we do the work the day before we cover everything the day before and then when an absence occurs then they, what they're doing is they're not covering it right they're not covering it i'm hearing some differences going on in brooklyn but i don't want to comment on brooklyn um because i really not don't 100 percent know but i just know across the system even an mta bus they're doing the same thing where they're not covering runs right they're offering avas at the crew now as a union rep and as a member you you know we understand you need time off for work but you should also have a problem of what they're doing because they're messing and and they're really screwing up our order you know in, in on our side of the, on our side of the water we have red books right and no matter what depending on what depot you are from you have a certain quota that's in that depot right and then the people who are on standby are obviously the ones who are underneath if you got 10 people who are due to be off in a certain location or whatever the number is number 11 12 13 14 15 on down is the standby so if you all if you go into work on a day that the mta says you know what i'm gonna we're gonna let people off at we're gonna let people off so they start asking people who are reporting to work do you want an ava day today they're violating the depot's red book policies right um but i want to tell you something we're not just sitting down on it we're not sitting down on it um the two division chairs in manhattan and bronx and myself um a grievance has been filed on that particular issue We've, we're grieving the whole issue we're grieving a lot of issues we're going to see what sticks but um one of the, the things that we're grieving is we're grieving the fact that they're um they're putting our people at, at harm's we, we we believe they're putting us in harm's way they're causing a big headway right so if you got an overcrowded bus there's angry people out there now we've these are discussions we've had with management time after time after time after time right um but when the when they when they go into their little budget things no matter what has been said to them they this is how they respond to it which means that they don't give a goddamn about our safety right they don't care so we, we filed a grievance based on that um there's obviously other things i can't discuss here but um you know we're addressing the issue that needs to be addressed when it comes to that right um there's so much arguing online oh i hate i love the internet and i hate the internet for this very same purpose and that's why on the internet if you don't agree with with what's being said or whatever the the narrative spillers spill or whatever they people try to they come across as knowing something and then if if they sound like they know and if it's disagreed there's some arguing um we all see things through a filter 
of our experience. Let me say that again. We all see things from the filter of our experience, right? And through this filter of our experience, if you got like a little bit of time, obviously you're going to see things from what you see, right? But you're not going to know or know things that had happened already or know how these things were dealt with or how we fought, right? We're not supposed to be on here fighting each other. We're supposed to be coming to our divisional meetings. We're supposed to be coming to these shop gates and instead of saying, what are you doing about things? Which, hey, I understand why the, the comment comes up because I'm your elected rep. But at the end of the day, what can we do to help in fighting management? Because the last time I checked, we are a union together. It's not the union reps here and the membership here. It's us like this. When we are able to separate like this, then you allow this little guy, the MTA, to come in, separate, do all types of damage, and then they kill your union, right? It ain't nobody else but us. Let's think about that. Let's rethink that. Let's rethink what we're doing and understand we got a job to do. We know it's a job. We know we come in. We want to make our money. We got need our health benefits. And we want to go home safely to our family. Our job is to battle because I'm, we're the representatives of you. So our job as the representatives of you is I listen to you. I hear what, you, what you're looking at. And I convey that. When do I convey it? I have a monthly meeting with the Department of Buses senior vice president. And I convey a lot of the stuff that's going on. Right. Their claim is always a back claim and there's a back and forth that goes on. There's a dialogue and there's a, there's a thing that's saying that we're going to work on things. But what we need is us to be standing together. Right. Maybe somebody's calling a personal and the workplace violence issue starts to happen. Why? Because this whole thing. um this whole thing about the headway and everything else is is playing on us. So we what are we doing? We're fighting each other out there on the road? That's crazy. That's crazy. We 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 cannot we cannot fall into those traps because what happens at the end of the day is the MTA is gonna discipline us. They're gonna discipline us for that. Be mindful of that. They're looking, they're looking for casualties. They're looking for casualties to fill the budget. All right. So we again, we got a grievance out there. Um, Sean Battaglia from Division One. Um, Claude Marshall, Claude Anthony Marshall from Division Two, and Donald Yates, Vice President, is on this grievance. Uh, we will share the results of it. Um, the MTA has been dragging their feet on a lot of things. Um, we are intending to put their feet and drag it to the fire, right? Even if we, and, and, and any chance I get to give it some media attention, I will. Um, I'm, I'm constantly, um, I have a little plug in with, with the media and I, I do get some points across. Um, so again, we're doing what we can and we're doing what we should be doing as a union we just want you to join us in the fight okay and with that being said i'm going to close out here i'm going to leave the i'm going to leave it open for communication i will respond to every single one of you guys response even if it even if it's um um even if it's a different opinion than than what you see or what I'm putting out there, I still will respond to you because, like I said, you know, we we all see things through the filter of our own experiences. I, I have um, 31, I am going into my 31st year. Um, there's things that maybe you don't know that I could talk to you about. And then obviously there's things that with your time on a job, you're in the seat. I'm not in the seat right now. You can educate me on. 
I try to educate myself and talk to the operators, but you definitely could could um you definitely could uh could teach me a thing or two also. It's always um understood on both sides. And then with that being said, um brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, um family, um I'm going to close now. And um I offer conversation that I will answer you through text. Um and the the most important thing that I want you to understand is that I need every single one of you guys to be safe out there. That is the ulterior motive and goal. Be safe. All right. There's too many things going on out there. This fair does not go directly into your pocket. Do not. Get upset at people for being angry at society. That's all it is. And they look at us, we're in blue. And they take it out on us. They won't want to pay, they want to storm by. Let it be. Let it be. It is our job to get home to our families. We should not be challenging that. We are not law enforcement. And you see how the city of New York and the court system even treat the folks who assault law enforcement. And these guys are let right back out on the street. So with that being said, be safe, everyone. One love.